Hello everyone, it's Dreamloop Devcast time. 2018 is already looking pretty good for upcoming games, and because of that, we put together a little list from people at Dreamloop. And on this list are the top three games that each of us is waiting for in order of popularity. So we're going to be going through our list, talking about our mo own most anticipated games of the year and just seeing what people are excited about, either looking forward to playing or just otherwise interested in the release. And there's also a couple that are already released as of the end of January. And if you watched some of our uh, vlogs, you might be able to guess some of those that made it to our list. And uh, with that, I welcome the rest of the guys. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, I'm Tommy. I'm here again. Mm, hello, I'm Kimmo. And also here again, I guess. <laughs> hello, I'm Eero. And I'm here the first time. <laughs> welcome, everybody. And let's take a little glance at our, our glorious list. And we're going to be going from uh, bottom to top, so... Uh, the most anticipated games are going to be at the end. And uh, uh, looks like we have we have uh, quite an entry as the first one here. Mm -hmm. And that's Death Stranding. And I believe it came from you, Tommy. No, no, actually it came from Jura because I didn't put it there because I know that it doesn't come out this year. But Jura didn't know, so he put it there. And... <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, but you never know. It just might come out. It cannot come out this year. <laughs> it just cannot. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> if you think if you think about the trailers that we've seen and everything we know about the game, it would be just like, well, I mean, yeah, that would be one strategy. No one knows anything like really about the game. It's just Kojima and craziness, mm. which actually is enough for me. Yeah, it. I mean, it's, it has been established that. Uh, I mean, in these vlogs and, and uh, podcasts that uh, Kojima has our approval at <laughs> Dreamloop. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, but Death Stranding, it, it, it's not uh, even announced or anything, so it won't, won't be coming out. But when it will come out, it's going to be amazing. So uh, next, we have Persona Q2. I don't no, even know this game. No comment. This no idea. No. <laughs> this was Juhas. Uh, I know of the... I, I believe this is a part of the Persona uh, series, uh, but the Q2 doesn't say anything to me. Yeah. I only know that there's a fighting game. It's a spin-off or something? For ah, the Persona so it, it's, it's about... Oh, okay. Well, that explains it. So it's a it's a 3ds uh, uh, fighting version of Persona, like fighter game or something. <laughs> Maybe yeah yeah I guess. Okay, but interesting. Hmm. Then we have uh, Detroit Become Human. Yes, that's one of mine. Uh, so yeah, it's a game from uh, Quantic Dream, the French guys who made uh, Heavy Rain and. Um, Oh, that's right. Uh, Beyond Two Souls. So, and what I've seen so far, it will be more about more like Heavy Rain than Beyond Two Souls, which is just great because Beyond Two Souls was uh, uh, <laughs> a game, I guess. <clears throat> but Heavy Rain was one of the most, um, I guess, striking games I've played at least up until that point. Uh, I really loved the story and mm -hmm. how whatever you did had at least some sort of an impact uh, within the story. Yeah, so it's a very, most likely going to be a very story-driven, story-heavy game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm waiting for this one as well. It didn't make my list, but yes, I'm waiting for this as well. Is um, the, what, what's the setting like? Is it like sci science fiction or what? It's a, sort of a sci-fi cyberpunk, and I wouldn't go with cyberpunky but it's a sci-fi well there's like um, android servants that are being sold to wealthy people and uh, the, some of them are starting to rebel against humans basically okay and then you play different characters uh, i'm not sure if you play both human and android 
but at least so far in the videos you we've seen uh, hostage negotiation android and some sort of a uh, like nanny android and both of them get into some interesting situations where you have to have to make like morally uh, ambiguous choices okay sounds interesting i and also also oh go ahead kim uh, actually, it was me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, anyway. Uh, so, one of the things that I noticed when I saw a trailer about the Detroit Become Human, uh, wasn't there a scene where, like, uh, some kind of mannequins actually started turning against humans or something like that, if I remember correctly? Yes, well, the mannequins were the androids that were on yeah. display. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, on the subject of uh, cyberpunk stuff that was mentioned, I, I see that, uh, uh, Tommy, you have also listed uh, cyberpunk 2077 as like to be uh, uh, still announced. What What is TBD? I don't know. To be determined, is. I guess. Okay. <laughs> Which Any, is, well, anyway. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, that's that's something that didn't get to the top three because again, it's probably not going to be out this year. Though I am re- very excited to see what happens in E3 since there be there's been rumors that uh, Sony will be showing off gameplay of the Cyberpunk. All right, all right, interesting. That's going to be great because that that game can't come fast enough. Oh yeah, that's I'm really waiting for that one. So uh, moving up on our list, uh, oh, yeah, we have Des- <laughs> Destiny Two Unshitified. <laughs> so uh, I believe uh, Villa was a little discontent uh, with with Destiny's uh, how, how Destiny Two turned out mm-hmm. in the end, and maybe we can have Villa's own uh, story about uh, this this matter in in another podcast mm-hmm. i'm sure he has lots to talk about yeah uh but yeah uh, it seems like he wasn't the only one who wasn't too happy with the Desti- how destiny to turn out to be um uh, there, there, i mean i guess the shitstorm isn't uh, too wrong to say about the game or mm. what's been going around it there there's been some interesting choices uh, from the Bungie, Activision, Blizzard, whoever's been in, who's whoever's been making the decisions, but there's been some interesting ones made. Yeah, that's what I've understood as well. So, so the next game is Spider Man. Oh yeah, and this was Eros Eros specialty. <laughs> yeah, uh, it seems that I was actually the only one who <laughs> wrote it down. But yeah, I'm actually pretty excited or wishful, I would say, about this game that maybe we are actually going to see a proper uh, Spider-Man game (laughs) finally coming out. Um, Oh yeah, at least the studio behind it will be, uh, has very good uh, track record. Yeah, but there are few things that I'm still (laughs) kind of thinking that I'm afraid that this game might be a little bit too cinematic and very linear game and that there won't be too much this explorative aspect in it but mm-hmm. we will see yeah i've never been a too big of a spider-man fan uh, i've always liked batman more so this seems like a batman arkham knight but just with spider-man and with that it's more light-hearted than yeah. okay batman games well, that sounds like a really good concoction, in my opinion. The Batman games have been really good, and mm-hmm. why not have a, a Spider-Man version for the Spider fans? Yeah. Up next, we have Bloodstained. Uh, what is this game? I believe it is the spiritual successor for uh, of uh, Castlevania that's been kickstarted and oh, it's right, been right. designed by the original designer or something does it yeah. actually even have Michiro Yamane as the composer let's see 
I believe yes. that was the case. Yes, it actually yeah. does. Yeah. Koji Igarashi She's... and Michiru Yamane from. Yeah. Michiro is the uh she's the castle one of the Castlevania composers. I I think she made the Symphony of the Night. No, don't quote me on that, but yeah, she I did. think. I'm pretty oh, sure she did. she did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that soundtrack will be good. <laughs> it, yeah, it seems uh, like an interesting case cuz there hasn't been too many, I guess, of the Castlevania style like at least really high profile games. Mm. Uh, but then again, the Japanese going to Kickstarter with a spiritual successor to something <laughs> with the original designers hasn't worked out that well so yeah, far. No. <laughs> so uh, it's well, we have to see yeah. when some some material uh, surfaces. Yeah. Let well, uh, I I just remember Michiru Yamane has also made uh, some music to the fighting game Skullgirls. And that that stuff also sounds a little bit like Castlevania. It mm -hmm. was it was fun to discover that it was made by her, <laughs> because it sounds familiar. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, and th these were all third place games. So now we're moving up to the second tier, and uh, uh, the these uh, next games all scored two points per entry mm -hmm. and well actually the amount of points per uh, entry doesn't really matter until until we get to the very last games because <laughs> yeah. everybody voted for different games but anyway the first one is sea of thieves mm -hmm. uh who's whose vote was this uh i i believe it was your eyes as well <clears throat> does uh, anybody know this game yeah, yeah it's uh it's uh i i love the game for the fact that it's uh it's an actual game that Rare is making and not just some shovelware for Kinect. Mm. Uh, Rare is making an actual comeback as a studio. <laughs> that's yeah. nice. So that's really nice to hear. And what I've seen of it, it's actually a really uh, interesting looking game. It's a multiplayer uh, pirate game where you take control of a ship with a crew of your friends and sail the many seas of the game and fight with... Uh, I believe both NPCs and players alike, but mm. it's not like an MMO. It's uh, I believe it's uh, on a smaller scale. Yeah, everything that I've seen from it has been really positive, and yeah, it looks really nice. And uh, looking forward to it as well. Yeah, we we can always use more pirate games. Yeah, it's, because... it's a very underrated or underutilized theme in gaming yeah. in general. In the past, there's like pirates, a <laughs> game called Pirates. <laughs> How inventive. And uh, I think it's it's even a series. There's more than one game in yeah, that. Yeah, it's the Sid Meier's Pirates. Yeah, yeah. And isn't it some kind of a, like a strategy game? Mm, it's kind of everything. <laughs> yeah, it has a bit of everything. It has some RPG oh, elements, right. some... Uh, very basic melee combat, and then there's the uh, like the overworld strategy elements as yeah, well. Yeah, and then the ship yeah. combat and mm -hmm. all sorts but of stuff. For some for some reason, I have this weird feeling that like every every pirate game that I've ever found is some kind of a strategy or tactic game. Like where where are all the action adventure type? Uh, pirate games. Well, obviously, you <laughs> haven't played Assassin's Creed 4, which is the That's best it. Assassin's Creed game, because <laughs> it's the least Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. Uh, yeah. And actually, talking about Assassin's Creed and pirate games, there's the Skull and Bones that I put on the uh, notes section, which is basically Ubisoft's... Uh, um, they basically took out the pirate uh, theme and gameplay from Assassin's Creed 4, and are now making a, a new game about just being a pirate with the yeah. same mechanics, basically. Yeah, and that's what right. Uh, what I've seen yeah. so far, uh, it's they have had a, this uh, annoying multiplayer focus on it, so I'm really wishing it will have a good single-player campaign. Me too. That was actually one point that I was uh, going for, that... Uh, that game is basically that game and uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, Creed 4 are the only ones that 
don't fall into this pirate games are strategy games mm -hmm. <laughs> thing. So so that's going to be a nice thing to have when it comes out. And uh, next on our list is Call of Cthulhu. And mm -hmm. if, if this list were, were a top five, then this one would have made it on my list as well. Yeah, it's... Well, there isn't, uh, there's never too much uh, or too many uh, Lovecraftian games, I think. Yeah. I, I, uh, especially if they're, the Lovecraftian themes are done well. Yeah, pretty much like, yeah. like in Darkest Dungeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Darkest Dungeon, yeah. That's a funny, uh, funny combination since the uh, narrator is... Wen oh, Jun, yeah. who has read many many uh, Lovecraft uh, short stories on audiobooks, yeah, I have to say it's the, it's a perfect voice for Lovecraftian <laughs> stories. Yeah, yeah, it is. I'm really looking forward to that, to this game. I don't really know much about it yet, but I'm a I'm a big Lovecraft fan, so so I'm waiting for that one. Next up is uh, The Wolf Among Us season two. Yeah, that's one of mine. Um, yeah. They, uh, at least so far, the best uh, Telltale game that I've ever played has been The Wolf Among Us first season, just because of the uh, IP, the setting, and the who done it sort of uh, mystery, um, and the mixture of all the fairy tale uh, characters and the real world uh, American sort of. Uh, well, the city, city, uh, like setting, the mixture of that is just, it feels so good. It's just, it's a <laughs> match made in heaven. Oh, uh, yeah. Sounds uh, really good. I don't know if anyone else has played the Wolf Among Us or any of the Telltale games. I have I've only played the Walking Dead series. Yeah, me too. Not this one. I would suggest t picking up the, um, season one of Wolf Among Us, if you like the sort of uh, sit back and just uh, experience the story kind of thing that Telltale us with each and every game they have. Yeah, I, I have this dream that one day I'll sit down and start playing those games again because adventure games were a part of my early, mm -hmm. early gaming career. When you know games like um, Day of the Tentacle and Full Throttle, yeah, and uh, and uh, all these Lucas Arts uh, smash hit uh, adventure games were new. Mm -hmm. Since then, I kind of stopped playing them, but uh, I always think about them <laughs> with a warm heart. Not to discourage you, but uh, the adventure part of uh, Telltale Games is really, really basic. It's oh. It's mostly just uh, uh, narrative, then some action, more narrative action yeah. choices, narrative action choices. Okay, well. <laughs> there is a very, very light adventure uh, adventure mechanics there, but it's mostly the control scheme, I guess. Click, yeah. Point and click. All right. Um, next up, Dragon's Crown Pro. And uh, this appears to be uh, some kind of a new version of the Dragon's Crown. And I did an image search, and I, I like what I'm seeing. So you can <laughs> all do that on your own time. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the only thing I remember about this game are the character models and the con yeah. controversy <laughs> that, that followed them. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Well, we'll see. But I've heard it's a good game as well. Yeah. Uh, next, A Way Out. Yes, this is from my list. Actually, this is not something really I uh, anticipate in playing, in a sense, but uh, it's an interesting concept on a, on a business side, because, and, and on a way how they conduct themselves <laughs> in interviews, for example. Um, a board galas. <laughs> yeah. So, so the idea in here is that uh, this is a game that you cannot play uh, without a friend. You have okay. to, You always have to play in co-op, and um, 
the, the other other player plays. Uh, well, the, 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 they are brother, brothers, the main characters. So other other one plays the other brother, and other one the other. And the most interesting thing is that when you buy this game, you get a second copy for your friend. So oh. it's, it's it's an interesting business model, and it's, it's very interesting to see how it pans out. That sounds really interesting. And it's also the... it's an also a theme that it's not that used in gaming. So it's about breaking out of prison, basically. So. Hmm. And it's from the guys who did uh, a Brothers: Tale of Two Sons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Which is one of oh. the best games if you want uh, a narrative experience that you can experience through gameplay. Because the the way they do the uh, the way they bind uh, narrative to gameplay is just beyond this world. It's it's really unique. I really like when when game companies try new stuff like this. It's uh, it may it may come out really great and it may inspire others to do more of the same things mm -hmm. and even like go further mm -hmm. and develop new new genres or what whatever it's so great to see that this this stuff keeps coming out yeah, yeah and this is also like the dev dev developer sticking to their guns in in that sense that they have somehow persuaded the publisher to actually agree to this <laughs> because yeah uh, on the paper it just doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. but of course the de developers are they they know that the game has to be played uh mm -hmm. in co-op and it's even more big uh, it's even bigger feature uh, like a feat when you when you realize that the publisher is ea mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right yeah i actually right. didn't haven't heard about this game until like yesterday when my one of my friends linked this to me and said like yeah we mm -hmm. got we really got to play this this is going to be interesting mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. A, it's an interesting concept and interesting yeah. take on on how to distribute games it's an in interesting uh, evolution on the brothers game cuz well in that game you control two brothers with one controller and in here, you ne always need a friend. So mm. it's interesting to see what they come up with. Two player only. That's that. That is that's a funny concept. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, next up we have Spelunky Two, and as far as I know, Spelunky is uh, like a dungeon exploring side scroller game rogue with some like. puzzles and roguelike. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this most likely is going to be more of the same, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know. I haven't followed Spelunky that much, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, what, me neither. What there's gonna be. Well, that was from Otso, and uh, his top one is also uh, sort of a, a roguelike game. Uh, so we'll talk about that later. Um, next one is Sword of Warcraft: Battle for Azeroth, and this is is this yet again another. <laughs> World of Warcraft expansion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That game just does just won't die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I couldn't care yeah. less. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> always. This always makes me cringe when there's a new <laughs> pack coming out. Basically. Oh my god. Still yeah. people there's, still there's, play. There's been a few times that I've just forgotten that World of Warcraft still exists. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just oh yeah we're coming up with an expansion we still have like five billion players <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep yeah so more more of that stuff next <laughs> we have uh, Final Fantasy 15 Royal Edition and this is great it's, it's yeah so Yarmo yeah so is, do you know if this is this like a edition where you have all the DLCs or I believe so and it's the PC version. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I've been, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XV uh, lately, and I really like the game. And I was con contemplating on buying the DLC as well. And maybe I'll pick this one up. I don't know. We'll see. Filled with new features, including a new dungeon, first person mode, and the ability to control the game's royal boat. I haven't uh. played uh, Final Fantasy XV. I don't know what all that exactly means, but. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, only thing actually, I understood uh, was first-person mode, and I'm, I'm like, okay, <laughs> the fighting is gonna be pretty awkward. 
yeah, it's gonna, <laughs> yeah, just add VR there, and and you're gonna vomit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the boat is actually something I was kind of expecting you you to to be able to do in the in the game itself. I was kind of missing that, but well, here it is now. Yeah. Well, next we have Catherine, full body. This uh, I, I remember Catherine when it came out, and it, it was talked about as a very uh, psychologically strange game. Also having some waifu content in it. <laughs> I haven't played it. I, I don't know exactly what it's about, but uh, at least it seemed very ambitious. Mm -hmm. And it was an. It, I guess it was sort of a. Uh, Sort of a visual novel slash puzzle game, I guess. Yeah, yeah. The main emphasis was really on the puzzles. That's pretty much what you do the most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and the game was about some sort of a love triangle between the main character and two Catherines, other one spelled with a C, another one with a K, I guess. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, Japan. Yeah, uh, pretty much. <laughs> The next game is Metro Exodus. Yes. And this was from you, Tommy. Yes. Um, the Metro games have been uh, really great this far. Uh, a bit chunky, yes, but uh, like audiovisually and the uh, like shooting mechanics, I I've really liked those because the weapons feel like they are actually actually very effective until you run up to a monster which will just tear you apart. <laughs> and I think it's a really good mixture of action and um, sort of like thriller slash uh, horror mm. in a game. And every time you start feeling very powerful, they will throw you in a horror situation and you will shit your pants. <laughs> that sounds good. Yep. And the Metro world, uh, the uh, from the books. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a it's a game based on a book or a series of books. The world is really interesting, like a post post apocalyptic Russia, and in the first two games you've been just walk uh, sort of limited to the metro, like underground underground metro tunnels, and uh, very few like um, out of the metro um, levels. But here, I believe it's more about the actual explore exploration of the uh, the ground level. Mm. And not so much underground. So okay. I'm really looking forward to it. Yep. Yeah, that that's going to be uh, the Metro series is going to be next for me in the uh, post-apocalyptic setting after I am done with uh, uh, Fallout 4 main story and the uh, Stalker Call of mm -hmm. Pripyat. You should feel pretty pretty much home setting-wise uh, from uh, Stalker. It's it has the very similar feeling. Yeah, yeah, I've understood that it's kind of somehow somehow similar. Uh, next we have a uh, Subnautica. This seems to be a uh, underwater exploration game. Mm. I think it just came out of early access. Yeah, it's been in early access for a while, and now it launched. Uh, I think like last, last week? week. Last week, yes, I think we were watching it here as well. Yeah. It's something people have been talking about uh, in the office for a while and hyping hyping about it and now it's out and personally I'm I'm waiting for this I, I want to play it at some point because it seems to be right up there in my alley has this yeah it's a VR like, game uh, it has VR as well yeah and uh, it has this like well you dive deep into the ocean so <laughs> yeah yeah, that's like the one fear I have. <laughs> like deep water darkness. It's like, uh, yeah. no, please. <laughs> hey, we can play it as a horror game. Yep, that's yeah, that's part of the horror game. Yeah, actually, I just thought just before you said that that uh, I could play that with that game, uh, provided that there are aren't like really super creepy like octopuses or anything like that. There are those like what what is it called the some sort of a ghost fish that has the sort of um, light attached to its head like the deep sea oh. fish that will just it's it's the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I think I think my uh, underwater explorations have been affected by the fact that I played Duke Nukem 3D as a kid, and the <laughs> Octobrain uh, enemies scared the hell out of me with with the the sound they make and uh, uh, and the creepy it's, it's brain like visual. This sort of guys I posted into our Slack. Let me have a look. Where's my Slack? Oh, that one. Okay, no. <laughs> nope. That was a big nope for me as well. <laughs> I could shoot those in Mega Man too. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> as long as the lights are on. Yeah. Next one. Nintendo Labo. Yes. The cardboard experience. <laughs> the cardboard experience. Yes. Or experiment, should I say? Yeah, this was this was something from my list and again, I don't personally like anticipate on actually actually trying this, uh, but it's such an interesting concept that I want to see how it does because it's it's cardboard. Come on, it's <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> it's, it's premium su- cardboard. It's super pricey cardboard. <laughs> so and yeah. some extra materials. I, I have. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and then you have some some device called Switch there, which I don't know know of. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, card cardboard. So yeah, yeah. call Anticipate me a cynic. That's... Call me a cynic, but uh, it's cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have. We're ha- have to see what Nintendo comes up with. It might be surprising. <laughs> yeah. So uh, next, La Mulana two, and this is, uh, like I said, Atsos number one choice, and the sequel to La Mulana. Which is a very uh, reputedly difficult side scroller game. I've actually played this myself. Uh, I'm the first one. I mean, of course. Uh, and uh, it really, you can't really run through it. It's you have to figure out where to go, and it it uh, intrigued me enough to actually <laughs> stop playing it. <laughs> 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 Uh, I uh, I didn't want to look up a, a walkthrough. I wanted to figure it out myself, but then some other games uh, happened. But maybe I'll get back to it. I'm watching a, some gameplay video here, and, and the protagonist just uh, used he, his or her whip to whip a Pikachu-looking character. Mm-hmm. So, and now there's some sort of a flying dinosaur demon monster. Yeah, this looks interesting. <laughs> It's a Japanese series, and it's it seems to be on Kickstarter now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it looks like the main character is a trio of girls, and they the main character has a whip, and then there's a elven looking uh, lady who looks like she could be a sorceress or something, mm. and a thief looking third the one. Pikachu looking character is just uh, freaking me out. <laughs> oh yeah that one <laughs> okay yeah. actually actually there's a gif of that in here on the in the kickstarter page on somewhere. kickstarter page okay. that actually does look like a it like is. pikachu or a pokemon <laughs> yeah okay all right next one system shock remake and this was from my list as well as from eros list yeah. and so we're hyped up for this one, right? Yes, we are. Funny thing is that <laughs> I actually never, never played the original. <laughs> I watched some gameplay videos about it and I was like, yeah, this is a really cool game. But it has been in my backlog for quite a some time. And now that the remake is actually coming out, uh, I think it's actually time to play it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it was on my backlog for a long time too. I, I recently started playing it actually. and. Uh, man, I have a lot to say about it. I I really like it, and I highly respect the way they had made the game back in the day. And uh, uh, I've been following the remake uh, project on Kickstarter for a while, and they they changed engines at some point. They went from Unity to uh, Unreal. I think even the I think the Unity was just a, some kind of a concept test it wasn't even planned to be used fully I'm, I'm not sure but I, I think I read something like that and they also started changing the the 
level layouts because originally they were intending to make everything less more more or less like like one to one copy of the original mm -hmm. but uh, uh i think they said in an um, interview that they wanted to change it to be a little bit more modern and playing the original i can see why they did that because the original has a lot of like corridors that are just this this very blocky very narrow very very short uh a corridor and it doesn't always seem like there is a logical route from like room to room within the it, it's just like a spaceship there there's people su supposed to be living there and it doesn't always seem like there's a there's a way for any like normal sane person to safely go from place to another so they maybe they wanted to make it a little bit more immersive that way mm -hmm. that they make it make a little bit more sense but I guess they sort of went from a remaster to a remake or a reimagining or something. Yeah. So I think it pissed off some fans, but uh, I'm still looking forward to it very much. I love the System Shock series. and the, Well, let's say the whole Shock series comprising of uh, System Shock and Bioshock series. Uh, I have to say now, at this point, we actually skipped one game that had two points. Oh, we did. It, it's from Matthias's list. It's called Soul Calibur Six. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, it I, wasn't on the list I, that I compiled. It, it's I <laughs> seem to yeah, have skipped I, I sc over it. I scanned over our games and missed my own one. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, Soul Calibur Six. Well, it's also mentioned by uh, by Tapia as well. So uh, yeah, Soul Cal Calibur is coming to PC for the first time, and. Uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, I've been playing not too many Soul Calibur games, but uh, lately five and sometime back in PlayStation 2, I played it, Soul Calibur 2. And they're fun games. It's refreshing to play a 3D game, especially with weapons, weapon mm. combat for, for change. And uh, it's looking really good so far. Graphics look great. And there's a, also a Tekken one of the Tekken 7 producers had joined the uh, Soil Calibur team at some point and he's been making some Tekken style visualizations into mm -hmm. Soul Calibur. That's gonna be that's gonna be great, I think. I've never been a big fighting game fan myself because uh, probably because I suck in those <laughs> games. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But the more fighting games we get on B PC, the better, I guess. Absolutely. I mean, for the longest time, it used to be like, if you want to play fighting games, you have to get consoles. And it really has turned around now mm -hmm. with the with the coming of Tekken 7. Tekken 7 is the first te Tekken on PC. And now also Sol Soul Calibur is doing the same. So as a PC player, we're good. Uh, actually, uh, we skipped another game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Theme was number three, Vampire. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah, Vampire is a game it's made a game. by. <laughs> it's. I, I think it's made by the uh, Life is Strange devs. So that's an interesting change of uh, theme. Yeah, I think it has vampires. It might have. There, it's, it, there's a high possibility of vampires. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's basically everything I know about the game. The yeah. vampires and the dev. And probably some road... Uh, uh, yeah, there was actually some sort of uh, board game mechanic in there somewhere. I can't... Oh, okay. That's all I know. It's starting to sound more, more and more like... Uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Vampire the Masquerade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But just like, Pirates, just like Pirates, we could also use more vampire games that are made well. Mm -hmm. All right, well... Let's try moving forward. We have a yeah. uh, Shadow three. of the Colossus. Top three. Yeah, these are top three. Uh, Sh Shadow of the Colossus remake. Another remake. Yeah. yeah. This was, <laughs> or the second this was remake. Er er Eros' uh, first choice. Yeah, this was my first choice just because I still haven't played this the original game. <laughs> <laughs> it has been in my backlog for quite a long time. and That makes two of us. Yeah, and based on what I have heard from the reviews, this is 
really really good remake actually <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. it's gonna be pretty much worth <laughs> getting it and playing it right now yeah if i had a ps4 pro i would go and buy it as soon as it comes out but since i don't it's gonna be 30 fps so no thank you <laughs> oh damn i had hoped that it was 60 but uh that's i guess at least that's what if, uh i've my, my research has come up yeah. with yeah uh, okay. it's not it's not an empirical study but uh, mm. at least i, I hope it's wrong. a stable 30 because uh the legend i no, what, what's what's his name? <laughs> the Last Guardian. Mm. That game, while it looks great, it has very heavy FPS issues. Mm-hmm. Mm. But what's the? Uh, oh yeah, no, yeah, never mind. Uh, that's it's developed by Blue Point, so the Sony's go-to porting guys or remake guys who've remade all the great games that we've been getting so far, mm. and their track record is is, is stellar. I mean. They haven't made a bad remake so far. Okay, well that, that that's good to hear. I think they made also did the uh, Metal Gear HD versions. Oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to Shadow of the Colossus. I haven't played it myself, so that makes three of us. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> ba- based on the reviews that I've heard, uh, the FPS is really stable, so 30 FPS shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Well, next we have uh, Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown. And this is the second one on, second highest game on the list. And this was due to me and Teemu putting it as, as our first choices. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a long discussion about Ace Combat series one day at the office. And uh, I, I, I have to say, I, this is a somewhat of an admission, but I haven't played any other Ace Combat than Assault Horizon, which was... Uh, which which made some fans furious about some things. I'm not even fully aware of what what all was wrong with it, but uh, it totally stole my heart, and I I really just loved how the game plays and how it looks and uh, all the all the pseudo immersive uh, <laughs> military chatter going on mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. the soundtrack everything. I love it so much. Yeah, uh, I actually bought this game a few days ago. Oh. And- uh, yeah, oh, not well, not Ace Combat Seven, but uh, Assault Horizon, um, and yeah, it's been actually it's the first actual like flying game I guess that I've ever owned. Yeah, and uh, it's been fun so far. Um, there are some very boring sections like the turret ones, but the actual uh, like uh, piloting of the assault planes uh, or fighters. Is actually really really fun. And, yeah, uh, I uh, I was thinking like, okay, this this story seems very much like uh, like if Tom Clancy was Japanese or something. <laughs> but then I heard or read that the writer is actually like a military fantasy uh, writer from America, though I guess. Yeah, a new 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 York uh, best selling author. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the devs are Japanese, so there are some Japanese flavor. I don't think the the, the story was very very amazing. Oh, it might have been, but maybe the presentation didn't really yeah. help it very much. I don't know. Clearly, the focus of the game mm-hmm. development was on the on everything else, but at least that everything else more or less works. Yeah, the story is serviceable, but it's not amazing. <laughs> So on the first spot on our list is Monster Hunter World P- for PC. And we have uh, one, two, three, four, five people <laughs> who voted for it. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I'm the only one who didn't vote for it, basically. <laughs> I didn't either. I did. I've never played a Monster Hunter game, yeah, so me neither. I have no experience. Me neither. I've, yeah, only me seen, neither. I've only seen people play it here at the office. I'm sure we're going to have a l- lots of talk about that game later because uh, Ville is also also a fan of uh, Monster Hunter series. And uh, well, it, it's an important release for Capcom on, uh, on f- because it's the first Monster Hunter on, on PC. It's not mm-hmm. coming... Uh, the, the, uh, the game is out already, but, but only on consoles. So 
so the PC version will come later and I think it's actually quite many months before it comes out but it's coming was it autumn Some yeah point in September or something yeah Oh yeah, it has sold five million copies. Yeah, so in far. three yeah. days. That's, in three that's days. Pretty yeah, fast. That's a lot. Yeah, that's that's really. Fast. Yeah, considering Capcom's other game like Street Fighter V was struggling quite a bit <laughs> to reach even even like what is like two million. Mm. Uh, but anyway, so that's so that's a big thing, and and uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that later, I'm sure. And we also have some honorary mentions here, like uh, there's, uh, of course, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yes. If it it's not, most likely not going to come this year either, but... Yeah, hoping, but most likely not this year, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big one for me as well. Then also, I know for, for a fact that Secret of Mana Remake is coming uh, February at the end end of february and mm -hmm. that's uh that's great i'm um, i'm looking forward to playing that it's on pc as well so great <laughs> that's awesome and the, yeah, the only thing only thing that's kind of holding it back is the art style yeah for my, chibi for me oh my god well. yeah yeah might be maybe maybe it's maybe i can somehow get by it uh by trying to just remember that the original also had mm -hmm. a little bit of that Super Nintendo JRPG look, which essentially is a little bit chibi esque. Mm. Then there's, I'm, of course, I'm give, yeah. go ahead. No, I was gonna say uh, I I have one uh, mention that's probably not gonna be released this year, but I'm still hype. Uh, Left Alive. Okay, I have. I... Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Matthias can appreciate the concept art because it's made by Yoji Shinkawa. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I haven't heard of this game. Uh... Yeah, it's. Uh, and also, there are some other uh, pretty high profile guys in this, in this project. Uh, it's some sort of a survival action game with mechs. Okay. Uh, so I have no idea what, what, what will come out of it but I'm really interested to see what happens with this one. Yeah, the concept art really, really... You can instantaneously tell that it's Joji Shinkua. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has that style. Yeah, no one no one else really does that. And I just... I could paint my, my like, walls with those <laughs> uh, concept arts. They're just so good. Yeah. And, of course, we have... <laughs> Dark Souls remastered, and <laughs> it's who cares? Uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's uh, it's a, a remaster of the first game on on PC, sixty FPS, and uh, well, I don't, we don't know much about it for now, but it's coming, and uh, of course, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, being up we almost got an episode in without the mentioning of Dark. yeah we almost did <laughs> yeah. we almost did <laughs> but yeah. no we didn't happen still anyway uh i have a couple more on my own list that this uh i'm slightly interested in the mech warrior 5 mercenaries that's another series i've, I've never played yeah i i haven't i'm not a veteran or, or anything i've just played a cu couple of times uh in uh, mech warrior 4 oh yeah hey was this the game that's sort of a single player for the mech warrior online i don't know or because uh i remember there was some talk at when mech warrior online came out that yeah okay it's it's fine and all but where's the single player oh. and i guess now the same guys are working on a single player mech warrior and i guess this might be yeah. it yeah, I, I've just always liked how the mechs look and the the whole idea of them being like, you know, um, these basically walking tanks with like pretty thin legs mm -hmm. and, and y y the management of the weapons and other systems overheating and stuff like that. There's, there's something charming about that to me and I'm looking forward for a new entry in the series. So where's Kim was uh, mentioning of uh, Battletech? Yeah, I 
I only have three slots, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but no honorable mention? No, no, not really. It's, it's okay, well, screw the game then. <laughs> yeah, screw the game then. <laughs> Bad game. <laughs> That's not please the overlord, Kimmo. <laughs> um, a couple of more left. Uh, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. It has... I think it has... at least nine old uh, Street Fighter games. And that's a huge... That's a huge one. Because I never played the like Street Fighter 3. Or I didn't even know or what what different kinds of versions there are. So it's going to be fun to just try them out when it comes out. These kinds of collections just bring to my mind, like, is there really that much difference between the games? Like, do you need all yeah, of them? Most likely not, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a nostalgia collection, of course. But they, they are adver- advertising that it's arcade perfect port. Then that's that's a big claim. They better back it up. <laughs> uh uh, I like. I would like to know what this Juha's uh, five dance games is, but I have no idea. <laughs> it's five. There's dance just games. a mentioning five dance games. Yeah. Just five dance games. Yeah, I wonder what the five are. <laughs> well, maybe we can ask Juha later, and he can come to our Probably. podcast to tell us about it. Oh yeah, there. Oh yeah, he actually also also mentioned Travis Strikes again, which I believe is. Um, Damn, I, I just forgot the name of the game. Travis Strikes Back. It was the Wii game with the... the Travis Strikes Again. Koki, yeah, it was the Koki lightsaber-wielding assassin dude. The game of... Oh, well, yeah, it was Suda51 50, game called... Uh, wait for it. Uh, no More Heroes. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, hack and slash or sort of a character action game where well it has a very suda 51 art style for one and it was probably the most violent game on the wii okay so that's that's basically what i remember of it (laughs) never owned it but it looks interesting Hmm. of course we have to mention dragon ball fighter z came out just now and looks gorgeous plays really mm. really well from the beta at least and uh i've heard there's a lot of shouting in that game <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well it's dragon ball yeah it's dragon ball yeah. z after all i think that's about it do you have anything else yeah. to mention before we go no, thank no. You, question mark oh oh i still have one and, and it's yet again a fighting game. And it's also released already, but Street Fighter 5 Arcade Edition. That was a very uh, very anticipated update for me, and it came out on... Oh, so now they've started to update it and not just sell it as a new game. Uh, yeah. How progressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's a... You know, the, uh, they originally said that they, they wouldn't do any of these uh, ultra super editions mm. but uh, it was a good idea in the end to actually just do it because the game needed rebranding and it's mm-hmm. and it feels like a very uh, much more completed game right now so it's mm-hmm. it's been very good stuff from capcom well at least they didn't sell it like they used yeah to. yeah it's a free update so I think we reached the end of our list. There's so many games. I wish we could have much more time to talk about this, but maybe next time. So uh, thank you guys for joining me, and uh, let's. Uh, thank you. Uh, we will uh, hear slash see everybody again next week. Yep. Hmm? Yep. See ya. See, see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.